Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers, and today I'm calling attention to all carnivores, to all people on a deep ketogenic diet that have been doing this for a long term. We're going to talk about what we call the insulin paradox. And there's a lot of noise coming out here in defense of, oh, this diet is so good because it is wonderful. It solves so many problems. But we've got to understand the insulin paradox. And I've been asked by a few folks to talk about this because they're still living in the trap in the world that more of a good thing is better. So what's the insulin paradox? Well, when people have been on a carnivore diet or on a very, very strictly controlled carbohydrate, low carbohydrate diet, less than 30 grams of total carbohydrates a day, typically for a long period of time, their insulin resistance gets better and they become insulin sensitive where their cells are very sensitive to insulin, almost every cell in the human body has a receptor for insulin. But here's the interesting uh, uh, problem is that, and this is one that, that causes a lot of confusion amongst other doctors out there who don't believe in the low carb, plus the low carb community, and we've become overly focused on this because of the concerns out there and the whole statin debate. There is a group of people called LMHR, lean mass hyperresponders, and they call it a phenotype. Because there are certain criteria that define you in this population, and it's used kind of as a badge of honor, and it should be because it is. It's a wonderful correction of health. But in my opinion, in my experience, in my practice, it's an overcorrection. So here's something to understand about insulin. Insulin is a hormone that has multiple functions other than just energy control. Just energy control. Yes, insulin for certain cells shoves sugar from the bloodstream into the cells, does so mostly in the muscle cells through a GLUT4 receptor. It does that. And that's what we've seen it as because insulin has been used to deal with diabetes and it's all this prominence in the diabetes world because diabetes is a sugar problem. But insulin is a anabolic or a growth hormone. And insulin has multiple other purposes. For example, insulin triggers protein synthesis and blocks down protein breakdown. So it blocks autophagy, blocks, blocks cellular breakdown and cellular repair, creates protein synthesis, creates lipid synthesis, producing fat from sugar, lipid storage when you eat fat. So it allows the fat cells to store fat. And insulin controls cholesterol synthesis in the liver predominant in the liver. So when your insulin levels, when you're insulin sensitive and you're producing insulin at mealtimes, it stops you from producing ketones at those mealtimes meal or reduces ketones that's under the influence of glucagon. And insulin triggers the pathway of cholesterol production by the liver. Now remember, cholesterol is an essential molecule for the human body. Cholesterol is essential to all nerves, especially the brain, and all cells of the human body as integral to the membranes. So cholesterol must, must be present in human cells. And cholesterol comes from two sources, or really three sources. The first source is production in the liver under the influence of insulin. The second is absorption from the intestine when we eat animal products, cells that contain cholesterol. And also from the autophagy, from the breakdown and release of cholesterol back to the liver by breakdown products of our own cells. They're undergoing breakdown all the time. Those are the three sources of cholesterol, with the dominant ones being either dietary or production in the liver. That's where we get the cholesterol from. So insulin regulates, insulin regulates cholesterol flux. And here's how it does it. And this is the insulin paradox. Insulin number one blocks autophagy. So it reduces the breakdown of cells. So it reduces the amount of cholesterol coming back to the liver from that cellular breakdown. Number two is insulin increases production of cholesterol by the liver. And number three, and this is the one that's not talked about, is that insulin reduces or blocks 
dietary absorption, intestinal absorption of cholesterol. High insulin levels block dietary production, dietary absorption of cholesterol and increases liver production of cholesterol. Okay, now that cholesterol that gets produced in the liver gets packaged in something called VLDL, which is the FedEx truck, it's the transport molecule that takes that newly produced cholesterol from the liver to the fat cells and to the other cells of the body, but mainly to the fat cells for storage. So those fat cells are not only storing fat, they're also storing cholesterol. At the same time, during a meal, cholesterol and the other fats are being absorbed in the intestine, but under the influence of insulin, you're absorbing less cholesterol, you're pooping that cholesterol out. It combines with bile, forming a micelle, and gets pooped out. Under the influence of insulin, get, some of those micelles get absorbed from the intestine, but the, but the intestine gets blocked by insulin for the absorption of those fats and cholesterol. But the chylomicrons go to the fat cells, dump their cholesterol, dump their fat in the fat cells, and then come back to the liver for metabolism. And any leftover, chylo, any leftover cholesterol typically gets turned into bile acids and bile salts and gets pooped out. That's the cycle. And then some of those get reabsorbed in the distal intestine and come back into the lymphatic bloodstream. So there's this enterohepatic circulation. Now, when your insulin levels are very low, let's say you're a type 1 diabetic and you're not giving yourself insulin, or let's say you are a carnivore veteran on a high carnivore diet, very little to zero carbohydrate consumption, your insulin levels are very low and that's a badge of honor. My C-peptide is 0.73, my insulin is 2.6. Happy, 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 profoundly insulin resistant. And because you're eating a carnivore diet, you are not triggering the release of insulin. GLP-1 is not being triggered. Insulin is not being triggered. Your insulin production, even at mealtimes, is flat. On craft tables, it's flat. It looks like, like a type 1 diabetic. Remember what I said about insulin? So with cholesterol, insulin number one is not triggering the production of cholesterol, you remain in ketosis, you're still producing ketones and, and releasing glycogen from the liver, even at a mealtime, because your insulin's flat, so you're not producing liver cholesterol. But you have to have cholesterol, you're eating all this fat, and it seems biologically obvious that without insulin, you're now going to absorb more of that fat. So in the absence of insulin, you're absorbing all this dietary fat, you're absorbing all the dietary cholesterol, and it's going to your fat cells in chylomicrons. Well, now your fat cells are bursting with fat and cholesterol, and you're only eating once or twice a day, and your body is living on fat. And that fat comes from your liver. Sorry, that fat does not come from your liver. That fat comes from your fat cells. So between meals, your liver is releasing non-esterified fat triglycerides, it's releasing cholesterol to go to your body, to go to your liver for ketones, and to go to your body as a fuel source. And as part of that, it's releasing cholesterol. Well, what's the transport molecule for that? LDL. Big, fluffy A particles full of triglycerides, full of cholesterol. So of course your cholesterol, as measured in a laboratory, is going to be elevated. Your LDL cholesterol is going to be high, but the paradox is it doesn't cause vascular damage because LDL is just a transport molecule. It's a FedEx truck. It doesn't damage the blood vessels. So the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype is typically a carnivore, but not always, but it's an ultra-low carbohydrate consuming person that has gone beyond insulin uh, 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 um, sensitivity to insulin suppression. So now you're suppressing insulin. You're living on fat, you're in deep ketosis or moderate to deep ketosis. And you're absorbing a ton of fat from your liver. Uh, sorry, absorbing a ton of fat from your intestine, not producing it so much from the liver, and then transporting that fat around your body in the form of LDL. Lean mass hyperresponder, low triglycerides, high HDL, high LDL, high cholesterol. 
That's why you have the LMHR phenotype. No magic to it. It's not causing any damage to the blood vessels. The concern, though, is that you don't have insulin. So your protein synthesis, your autophagy, all of those things are failing and become problematic when you don't have insulin. We need that insulin. So those folks should be consuming a little bit more sugar, maybe 100, 120, 130 grams of sugar in two meals a day to trigger insulin. And when they trigger insulin, when they're producing insulin, that very, very high cholesterol comes down. We've seen that every day in my office as we put people on our carbohydrate carnivore diet. Or as they self-discover this. Even Tim Noakes has written about a carbohydrate diet, a low-carbohydrate diet, being between 120 and 130 grams of carbohydrates a day. Insulin suppression is real. Ben Bittman speaks about it. He doesn't call it insulin suppression. That's my word. I've been using it for about five years now. But that's what it is. And how do I know this even more? Because our type 1 diabetics do not have this as a problem. Same diet. But they don't have this as a problem. Why don't they have this as a problem? Because they're injecting insulin. They have to inject insulin. So the LMHR phenotype, the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, is a phenotype of insulin suppression. And it's measurable, and we do it every day in our, in our practice. It's not awfully harmful or bad, but it tells us it's an overcorrection. We have to come back to a preemptive diet that includes some carbohydrates with a carnivore diet, like every first world nation. And I know that may sound blasphemy to all those carnivores that are thumping their chest and saying, rah, 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 I'm carnivore. I'm 95% carnivore. My son is 95% carnivore, but he gets a bottle of whole milk twice a day for that sugar with a fat. I make sure that there's a little bit of carbohydrate in my diet to trigger insulin. And yes, my cholesterol is high. It's 240, but it's not 3, 4, 500. And my HDL is high, it's 87. And my triglycerides are 53. That's true also for all my patients who, who trust me enough to try this algorithm. And we're on top of their blood work, we follow it. Tough, tough, tough to understand. But that is exactly where science is taking us. Very, very few people out there are actually seeing this in practice. And there's a new phrase that's being quoted for this. The LEM paper. We're going to talk about that. But all because you're discovering this for yourself right now, it doesn't mean it's new. That's the value of a mature practice like ours. Because we see this stuff. We've seen it for many, many years now. And we got shouted down for talking about it. But it's real. It's out there. And it needs to be taken seriously. You can lambaste me. You can leave whatever comments you want to. Time. Time will prove that this is true because we're seeing it. And I can't unsee it. If you want to know more, if you are that carnivore who is insecure, if you've been prescribed a statin, but you don't want to be on a statin, and you should not be on a statin. But to my mind, you should trigger insulin. That's the insulin paradox. Low insulin results in fat absorption, cholesterol absorption from the gut. That's why you LMHR. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. Leave comments. Subscribe to this channel to hear more. But let's debate this. Let's talk about it scientifically, not emotively. I hope this helps. I hope it makes you think. We'll talk some more the next time.